Hello everybody. Today we are in the south of the Corrèze department in order to discover some very interesting pieces of altar that are found in beautiful churches, in beautiful villages, like the one which is behind me, the church of Collonge la Rouge. Okay, follow me. Okay, but maybe you don't know what is a piece of altar, a uh, retable, as the French say. Wait a minute, I'm going to explain you. The word is coming from Latin, retro tabula, in other words, what is behind the table. And altar pieces are existing since Middle Ages and probably before. But until the end of the Middle Age, an altar piece would be maybe a veil, a curtain that would hang behind the altar, or it could be several wooden panels, painted or sculpted. Often those uh, panels are folded, they could be folded, and then we speak of a triptych. But things are going to change with the 16th century and the Protestant Reformation, because soon will come the Catholic counter Reformation, which is a kind of response from the Catholic Church. And the starting point of this uh, Counter-Reformation is the Council of Trent between 1545 and 1563. The Church is going to set the doctrine and to reaffirm some features of this doctrine. For example, for what is interesting us now, about the substantiation you know that according to the Catholic Church, a consecrated host is really containing, is the body of Christ. It's not uh, an image, it's not uh, symbolic, it is really the body of Christ. And accordingly, you cannot keep the body of, uh, of God, actually, uh, somewhere in a mere place of the Church. It has to become the epicenter of the Church. And this is why, after the Council of Trent, the tabernacle, this box, which is uh, sheltering the hosts, is going to become the very center. And it's going to be installed right in the middle of the altar. This uh, tabernacle soon is going to be carefully adorned it's going to be uh, gilded, it's going to be painted, it's going to be sculpted. And soon, this uh, tabernacle, this decoration, this retable, this uh, altar piece, is going to extend in length and in height. Uh, the altar piece is going to occupy the entire background of the choir. After the Council of Trent came the religious wars in France, uh, which were particularly uh, cruel. Uh, many uh, churches were destroyed, their decorations were uh, either uh, destroyed, uh, vandalized, uh, hammered. And uh, after the religious wars came a period of uh, trouble in France that actually will end with the middle of the 17th century when the Kingdom of France will uh, find again prosperity and peace. And then every parish, every church of uh, France would try to adorn uh, the bottom of the choir with a altar piece. And then that is explaining why around the middle of the 17th century, uh, Christians would find the money and time in order to re-adorn, to redecorate their churches, particularly thanks to the new altar pieces or retable. Look at that, look at the name of that uh, street. Rue de la Sirène. La Sirène in French is a mermaid. Now I show you another mermaid. 
but this time it's a funny little sculpture that you find at the, the base of this uh, decoration. A beautiful mermaid, you recognize the fish tail with the, the fin, with the scales, long hair, carefully combed. Well, and actually it's a representation of vanity, human vanity or feminine vanity because uh, in her left hand she has a comb and uh, in her right hand what does she have? A mirror. So I let you make your own conclusion. So we are now in front of the church. It's a very interesting church, plenty of uh, things to discover, particularly this incredible tympanum. But uh, not today. Today we are going to focus only on the retable, on this uh, piece of altar that we are going to discover now. So we are now in front of uh, this uh, retable, which is dating back to roughly the middle of the 17th century. So you would find first the table, the altar itself. Above the altar, on the first level, you would find a representation of the Last Supper. And above, on the second level, in the middle is the tabernacle, the epicenter of the church is uh, decorated with a small niche. Inside the niche is a representation of Ecce Homo, in other words, the Christ after his humiliation. And the uh, framing tabernacle are two panels, gilded panels, one which is representing Saint John Baptist, and to the right it is Saint Peter, you can recognize him thanks to the little bird which is on the branch. Actually, it's, this bird is a rooster. It is the rooster that will sing three times soon. Then above, of course, you find a glory, this heart that is surrounded by uh, shining rays, a big uh, cross, the center of the decoration, which is uh, the crucifixion. To the left, Mary, the mother of Jesus. To the right, Saint John. You find those uh, torsaded columns, very characteristic from the Baroque style. And on the very top of the retable, you find God. It's a blessing God. It's no longer the punisher, but the loving God and uh, you would find the table, the altar. It is decorated with two bishops. We do not know exactly who are these bishops. And in the middle, the famous IHS, Jesus Omini Salvator. Jesus is a savior of uh, all men. And uh, everywhere around you find plenty of representations of angels and uh, cherubs. But for me, the most interesting is the two uh, frames that are uh, surrounding the, the altar and the tabernacle. Those two frames that are displaying all the, the tools, all the things that were used before and during the crucifixion of Christ. If we try to describe the right frame, you would discover in the middle a kind of a column, probably the column where Christ was tied when he was whipped. Actually, you see the whip to the left. Under the whip, you find a sword, the sword of the soldiers who whipped Christ. Under that, you find two torches and a lantern. This is probably to signify that uh, a part of the crucifixion happened when the sun disappeared. You also find a calice to the left. Is it the calice that is mentioned during the agony of Christ? To the right you see a hand and beside uh, what we call an egir for water. 
might be representing the hands of Pontius Pilatus when he decided to wash his hands and to abandon Jesus to his attackers. You also find probably a game of marbles that was played by the soldiers when they were arguing for the possession of the tunic of Christ. And uh, beside the, the column is this series of uh, silver coins, maybe the reward of Judas for betraying Christ. I forgot to tell you, but on top of the column is uh, a representation of uh, Veronique Veil. You know that she's the, the one who tried to clean the face of Christ with a cloth and the face of uh, Christ was kind of uh, printed on the cloth. Now let's try to describe the left frame. Uh, it's a little easier because in the middle you recognize the main cross plus those two uh, smaller crosses. You would find the ladders that were used to, to help uh, planting the, the cross on the, on the ground. You would find uh, a hammer and you would find a pinch that were used for nailing the Christ. You would find uh, a spear. It is a spear of the centurion who pierced the Christ body. And to the left, on top of this long shaft, this little uh, round thing would be a sponge, a sponge that was dipped into vinegar when uh, Christ asked for some uh, water, when Christ said that he was thirsty and he was given only vinegar. I forgot to speak of the rooster, which is on top of the cross. This time it's not the same rooster, probably it's the rooster of resurrection. It is the bird who sings in the morning when light is coming back, light which is maybe symbolized by the, the star above the, the rooster. So, after uh, Collonge, uh, we could not do either than uh, making a, a stop in uh, the church of Beaulieu. Uh, we like this church, which was uh, a pilgrimage church. It is very well known for the quality of its uh, sculptures, particularly the tympanum. But uh, for the moment, uh, let's uh, put that aside and uh, let's us discover one of the two rare doses. This uh, first rare dose is the work of two local artists, Pierre Estrade, the sculptor, and Jean Duchesne, who was the, the gilder. It dates back to 1678, probably. And uh, you can see that uh, it's very different from what we discovered in Collonge. There it was a kind of list of all the, the tools, uh, the things that were found in the Passion. Here you see that it is a more uh, solemn uh, topic. Actually, it is taken from uh, the Gospel. Uh, let's try to describe what we see now. First, we have this uh, table, the altar. On the table is a kind of uh, tabernacle, which actually is looking more like a reliquary. And actually, you can see two portraits, the portraits of two saints. You find them again under the shape of uh, statues, left and right. These two saints were brothers, Prime and Felician who were uh, decapitated uh, at the end of the 3rd century under the reign of uh, Diocletian. Actually, you can, uh, by the way, discover a representation of their martyrdom right uh, under the statues. All that is uh, framed by those uh, uh, torsaded uh, columns. In the middle, you can see uh, the, the main uh, scene of uh, the rear dos. It is the moment uh, when Christ is giving the keys to Saint Peter, what we call the traditio legis, the giving of the keys. 
Saint Peter is kneeling and kissing the hand of uh, Christ when behind them are some uh, apostles and above in the clouds you can see an angel with uh, the Pope crown and the triple cross which is uh, actually representing the three powers of the Pope, the power on church, the power on earth and the power on heaven. Right above this uh, frame you discover a representation of the Holy Spirit under the shape of a dove and uh, above again another statue representing Saint Benedict. Let's not forget that we are in an abbey which was Benedictine belonging to the order of uh, Cluny and at last embracing the entire rare dose one discover God. Something I forgot to tell you is why do we find the representation of Saint Prime, Saint Felician, why not other saints, why not other relics? It is because when the monastery of Beaulieu was founded in the middle of the 9th century, one of the donors was Raoul de Turenne, the brother of the Viscount of Turenne, and uh, he offered these relics, who actually he took back from uh, Rome. Okay, let's pass to the, to the other rare dos. We are now in uh, the deambulatory. Uh, in other words, we are behind the choir. This is where the, the pilgrims used to, to pass. And uh, in one of the, the apses, we discover this second rare dose, which is a kind of uh, extraordinary. So it is the rare dose of Mary's uh, Virgin. You can see the altar, which has the shape of a grave, and uh, the shining monogram of uh, Mary, A.M. Beside framing the altar, there is no tabernacle, but you can see two cartouches. One is representing Mary the Virgin at her desk, and by the other side, the angel Gabriel. Those two cartouches are representing the Annunciation. And uh, in the middle, you find uh, those uh, torsaded columns again. In the middle, this uh, oval frame, which is representing the Assumption. On the lower register, you discover the Apostles. In the middle is uh, the young John. His hand is resting on uh, the grave. And above, Mary the Virgin, who is now dead, is transported by angels and angelots towards heaven. Above is a, another rectangular frame. You discover Mary the Virgin, who is uh, having her hands joined. To the left is uh, Christ, her son. In the middle is the Holy Spirit under the shape of a dove. And to the right is uh, God uh, himself. This uh, rare dose has two more uh, sections by this side of the windows. It's exactly the same uh, uh, style. Uh, we are in a Baroque style again. And of course, the statues that we discover have a link with Mary the Virgin. Here to the left is uh, our uh, husband, Joseph. And uh, to the right, our mother, Saint uh, Anna. What is amazing in this rare dos is the incredible profusion of decorations. Foliage, fruits, flowers, angels, cherubs, gildings everywhere. And certainly for the usual pilgrim, standing in front of this rare dos, it was probably a stunning experience. So yes, we will have to come back to the Church of Beaulieu because in addition 
to the sculptures, there is another treasure which is in front of me, this uh, treasure of uh, relic quarries, particularly those two relic quarry arms, and in the middle, that little uh, enameled relic quarry dating back to the 13th century. It's a pure marvel. Okay, we have left Beaulieu and we could not do either than uh, making a short stop in Curmont. You discover the, the village in front of me. In the middle, those two small castles and to the left, the bell tower of the church. We're going to make a stop in the church in order to discover a new rear dos. More simple, but nevertheless very interesting. Let's go. And in front of us is now the rear dos of uh, the church of Curemont. It's a more modest uh, one. For example, you can see that the twisted columns here were replaced by two pilasters. And nevertheless, it is very beautiful. It has been uh, recently restored. The major theme in the middle, in uh, that uh, square frame, is the crucifixion with uh, Mary the Virgin and uh, Saint John above. On top is uh, like uh, popping out of the sky, God himself, blessing. And uh, to the left and to the right are two uh, statues. One to the left is supposed to represent Saint Bartholomew, and the one to the right would be a local bishop. That's all for now. Of course, uh, uh, we'll get plenty of uh, opportunities to discover Riodos in other places uh, of southern France.